Okay, welcome to part 10 of the Johnny Blunder 3 series. Um, as promised in part 9, I'm going to go ahead, go in here and uh, add a little bit more uh, detail. Um, I don't know about detail, but I guess you could call it detail. I don't know, extra extra work a little bit to the, uh, the texture map. So instead of having this solid skin tone, we're going to come in here and kind of just add a few highlights and, uh, um, you know, just different skin variations here. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in there and do that. Let's start with the nose. I'm going to click on my color selection, get the eyedropper like we were doing earlier, and just make it a little bit brighter and a little bit more red. And I'm not going to set that to be a solid color because I just want to have a very subtle coloration there. So set the strength way down. I'm going to set the radius up. And let's go ahead and make sure, if you notice, when you're messing with, with right here, the strength and the radius and everything, it also changes it over here. So um, I guess, honestly, you don't really need both windows open because they're both doing basically the same thing. So you know what, let's just go ahead and do that. Let me just select the fall off brush that I was wanting to use. So we'll go ahead and hit T over here to close our toolbox. That'll give us a little bit more canvas room to to work with our, our painting um, okay so make sure what type of brush we're using um, okay um, mm -hmm. okay there is a little bit of difference I was I thought that there was but uh, the main thing I think is setting the, the project paint on and off so um, since I'm just going to be working on the face and I don't want it to kind of mask off, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for now. But we'll try to make sure that we stay within the face bounds, which shouldn't be too hard because it's, you know, it's a pretty good size bounds. And for the most part, we're going to be working here in the middle of it. So um, so we'll just go ahead and, oops, it's a little way too much. <laughs> Undo that. Uh, let's set the strength way, 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 way down. And the radius down. So we'll just kind of, there we go. That's a little bit better kind of just touch it up just go in there add just a little bit of variation so it's not just one bland skin tone so do the same thing up here on the forehead now it's a little difficult to tell because it's such a light color and it's so the strength is so small so small but we're also it may not look like it, but you can see there that we're painting on top of the, the eyebrows too here, which it's ugly right now, but we can we can fix it back up as soon as we kind of come to a stopping point of here. Go ahead and clean that back up here in just a second. We'll come over here and zoom into the face. You can kind of see a little bit of difference where we're painting the subtle coloration there. Okay, and I would like to kind of darken up inside his nose, inside his nostrils. So let's get a little bit darker shade here. Maybe about like so. Not too much. I'm just gonna and make our brush quite a bit smaller. Even smaller and the strength way down. I just want to have just a subtle coloration change in there. There we go. And maybe a little bit more on the outer edge here. There. Okay. Kind of want to do the same thing around the eyes, but hmm, I'm kind of afraid I'm going to mess up the eyelids there. So you know what? One trick we can do. Now, we're going to be messing with this quite a bit when we get to the actual rigging and things like that. And what's what I'm gonna about to show you is shape keys. Now, he's got it inside of his mouth, and we would like to kind of see what that looks like as well, but we can't because his mouth is closed. Well, we can give him a shape key to where it's basically a morphing shape to where we create. Well, I'll just show you. Uh, just go to your object data, come down here to shape keys, and we'll just go ahead and say we'll just turn them on. Say we need a basis to to, to pull all the other shape keys from, so that'll be the first one. And then the next one, go ahead and click, click key one, and that's the first one. We'll just go ahead and name that one Mouth Open. Okay, now we go to edit mode, 
let's go to our side view and let's grab this chin area here and turn on our proportional fall off to the connected let's just go ahead and rotate let's, you know what let's put our 3d cursor back here and then hit period to rotate around it and then we'll rotate the mouth open and let's go ahead and increase our proportional fall off as we're doing so you know what might get a better mouth opening if I actually select part of the lips here there we go and let's see what that looks like so just just to open the mouth so we can see inside there we'll end up deleting this shape key and making some better ones later on but for now this is just so we can see inside the mouth make sure all the colors everything was painted properly let's go ahead and grab that whole bottom row of teeth and move it down now make sure <laughs> while you're doing this make sure you're on that new mouth open shape key because if you're on basis that's gonna set set the basis so we come out of edit mode you see the basis is what it's going from and the mouth key the mouth open key is set to zero but if we run that up to where it should go 100 we can see that well looks like the the technique I used for the inside the mouth was not quite correct let's see why that might be hmm. I guess it's counting this as the lips and this is the around the tongue so okay that's good knowledge to know um, let's go ahead and try to fix that up so let's go ahead and select that pink color and Go ahead and set the strength up and let's paint all the way around there we go and then we will grab that skin tone our eyedropper there we go let's get the skin tone that's there on the lips right there and we will come in here Maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, there we go. And that way, tab out. You can see, there we go. A little bit better. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the way we can kind of see it in action. And another thing, like I was talking about earlier, when you go and fix up the eyebrows. So let's find those fellas. There we go. Is that the one that's messed up? Just grab a piece of it if I can. Zoom in and do it. L and mm, no uh, well just from visual visuals I can see that it's this one so let's tab out there and let's select that color and just paint that back the way it should be and there we go okay now like I mentioned before I'd kind of like to darken up around the eyes but I don't want to accidentally mess up the eyelids I guess for that matter, I could use the same color that the eyelids are. But we'll just do it here on the UV map, like we did with the legs. Or like we did with the rest of the body. I don't remember. <laughs> Forgive my memory. It's not so good sometimes. Okay, so let's just uh, kind of spot paint in here. Just a little bit. Let's make our brush a little bit bigger. And the strength way down. Let's just be a subtle bit. There we go. A couple of times. Okay, can I see that in effect there? And let's give a little bit of rosiness to his cheeks. So let's select that same color inside the mouth, but at the strength way down. Kind of just touch on the cheek area here a little bit. There we go. And maybe on the tip of the nose. I know we lightened it up earlier, but maybe that's too much. Let's make our brush a little smaller then do it there we go and you know what why not along the chin as well too much set the strength way down there we go and why not let's go ahead and darken his lips up I suppose just come in here real tight let's kind of paint Let's 
in the brown color though, isn't it? Yeah, let's just undo that. Oops, too far. Okay, now I'll just close the mouth up. See kind of what it looks like there. That's eh, okay, I guess. Hmm, I really would like to give those lips a different shade. Make sure we're painting the right color. It's got the same color over here, yeah. Hmm, maybe a little bit more pink. Right there, let's try that. Wanted to paint really dark for some reason. Smaller brush. That looks like he smeared his lipstick or something. I don't know. We'll just leave it alone. Okay, so let's go ahead and save our texture. Save image. Okay. And I guess that's fairly good on the face. Um, let's go ahead and touch the, the chest area up just a little bit. Add a little bit of lightness here and there just to break things up. Go ahead and grab some of that lightness here on the body area. Set the strength way up. And we'll just come in here and... Pink belly, and his shoulders, and palms of his hands, maybe inside the forearm area, maybe over here. Okay, now um, we could spend all day tweaking this and adding extra stuff, but uh, we'll call it done uh, for the most part. So let's go ahead and come out of Texture Paint back into Object Mode. And let me save this one last time. Save the image. Okay. I'm going to merge these windows back together because I'm pretty well done with this for right now. Oops. Got to watch that sometimes. It'll split them up again instead of merging them. There we go. Okay. Now, um, I want to give his eyeballs some color too, but I'm not going to texture map those. I'm going, going to just give them two separate colors. So we select the eyeball. We'll come over here to the Materials tab. We say a new material, and it puts up a new color in here. It's typically white, or off-white a little bit. So we'll make that white, and set the intensity of the diff diff diffuse color all the way up to 1.0. And it's going to be pretty shiny. This is the whites of his eyes. This wet eye surface, so we'll make it pretty glossy. And the way we can do that easier is go up to Ward ISO. I like that one. <laughs> because that's my name as well, David Ward. So. And set the, the on Ward ISO, it's kind of the opposite, the slope versus the size on, say, blend hardness. If you go up, make your hardness bigger, it makes a, the sm spot smaller, and smaller makes it larger. But in Ward ISO, you want to make it, the smaller the slope, the more sharp the dot is. I don't know if you can see that. Let me grab the monkey here. You can see it a little bit better. Okay, so this, let's make the slope just an even 0 0.035. Be a nice, glossy looking uh, sheen there. And another thing I want to do, you don't have to do this, but I think it adds a little bit of realism to it, even though it's a cartoon scene. Um, but we'll add a little bit of a reflection to our sh glossy surface here. So let's set the reflection settings here to 0.15. And if you look, you can kind of see it's reflecting the grid pattern behind the preview area here. But I'm going to give it a Fresnel uh, setting as well. And what that is, is basically it. Uh, the higher the number is, it makes it reflect only around the edges. So right now it's pretty well, if we go back to the sphere, you can kind of see it reflecting across the whole surface. If I set the Fresnel up, you kind of see it starts to fade out of the center of the sphere there, the reflections, and it goes more towards the edge. So let's set that to point... Uh, 2.0. There we go. So our mirror settings for our, eye, our white eyes is going to be the reflection re reflectivity is 0.15 and the Fresnel 2.0. And you can also blur it if you want to, um, but we're not going to mess with that right now because uh, I want it to be nice and shiny. But if you had like metal or something that you were going to work with that you wanted a s soft reflection on but you didn't want it to be like a mirror image you could set the gloss amount. Right now, 1.0 means it's glossy, it's sharp, it's it's mirror image. But if you set that down a little bit, you can kind of see it kind of blurs the image a little bit. But 
like I said, I want to keep this nice and nice and shiny and reflective. So let's go ahead and name this material I white. Or you know what? I think I'm going to apply this to the teeth later on. So let's just call this shiny white. And then um, right now the whole eyeball is this shiny white color, but we want the the pupil iris area to be black. So I want it to also have the same mirror settings and everything. So what I'm going to do is just create a new material here with this object. Just hit the little plus sign. And I'm going to go to the little pink grid sphere there and say I want shiny white again. But I just want a copy of it. So I'm going to click the 2 and that just makes a copy and it names it shiny white dot zero zero one. So let's change that shiny white name to shiny black. You can see we now have two different materials. And let's go ahead and set the diffuse color to black. You can see we now have shiny white and shiny black. Now, to get the shiny black to show up on this sphere, or eyeball, we have to go into edit mode. And I want to go to the vertex select mode. And let's tell you what, grab one of those vert vertices and hit control L. You'll select everything and just hit the period button on your numpad and it'll center that up in your viewport. It'll be a lot easier to work with. So let's grab this row of vertices and you hold down shift and alt. Go ahead and click on that row, that row, that row, and then just shift by itself that row. And we're going to assign the shiny black to those selected vertices. When we tab out, you can see now that we have the shiny white on the whites and the shiny black on the pupil area. So we're going to do the same thing on this eyeball. Let's go ahead and grab that shiny white. We don't have to create a new one this time um, as far as creating the settings for a new uh, material, but we will have to add a new material here for the shiny black. And we'll do the same thing in here. Go into edit mode. And when we, were, when we created this eyeball, we still have that selected, so we don't have to select that again. We'll select each one of these rows and then just shift by itself to select that last vertex and assign that shiny black there. Okay, so now we have our eyeballs colored the way we want them, but we didn't have to run any seams and, and uh, unwrap the UVs. So that's another way you can do uh, different materials on one object. For example, if you didn't want to mess with texture mapping at all uh, for your, your model here, which Actually, we need to go ahead and apply that texture we did make. Um, but you can do the same thing. Just create a like a skin tone material, you know, like we did the shiny white and shiny black. You could just have a skin tone and then like a hair color, so on and so forth. It's for as many different colors you want. And then just select pieces and say apply this color or assign this color to that piece. Select this, assign that color to that piece, so on and so forth. But uh, I kind of like to do the kind of a mixture of the two. So... Um, like I said, we created the texture map, but we still need to apply it to our model. So let's go to material right here where it says material. We'll just go ahead and name this JB. Actually, I think I hit caps lock earlier. Yes, JB underscore texture, or we'll just call it material. There's a difference between textures and materials. Uh, materials are like we just created. That's just a single color. Um, well, <clears throat> A material pretty much encompasses everything that is in this section. So if anything we did on that white, shiny white material, we could have added a texture to that. Um, but that's a material is one, it's hard to explain. It's a, kind of the, in the parent-child relationship. <laughs> the material is the parent and any textures that are applied to that material are children of that. Uh, of that material. So, um, said all that to say this. <laughs> let's uh, let's add the texture map that we created to this new material. So, we need to tell it to be a image or movie. Go down here and say. Now we have to tell it where the image is. And since we should have it loaded in our scene already from where we were just working on it, we can click the little thumbnail right there, and just go up to say untitled because we never did title it. Matter of fact, let's do that right now. Let's call that JB underscore texture map. Okay. And good to go. Now we need to go ahead and collapse that and say on mapping, the coordinates deem to be UV. And since we only have one set of UV coordinates, 
Uh, we don't really need to tell it which ones to do, but we can if you want to. Um, okay. And that's uh, pretty well it. Let's do a, so we can preview it here, just go to both. And I like to use the monkey head. It seems to display a little bit better. And right now the influence is set to color, which is what we want. So if we go back to our material settings, we can change the specular level, which he's not going to be that shiny. So we need to set the intensity down quite a bit and the hardness down as well. So let's set the intensity to an even 0.2, hardness down to 40. Okay, and let's go ahead and save. And now, if we were to go into textured mode, you can see our texture map is applied. And since the eyeballs don't really have um, a texture, they just have a material, they don't have the, the color on them like like uh, like the skin does. Um, okay, one way you can see the colors of everything a little bit better. Go over here, down here to your display. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And under shading, if you go to GLSL, it'll kind of show you sort of like a, a live, you know, on the fly render of your scene, sort of. Now it's not a full scale render because you can see it's not anti-aliased or anything like that, but it kind of give you a better idea if you're doing more um, detailed mapping. And it actually responds to how many lights are in your scene. So right now we just have the default light. So if we shift D and duplicate that light over to this side, we can see that a little bit better. Grab both of them, drag them down so it'll line them up a little closer. And the shiny surfaces of our eyeballs are kind of reflecting those lights. So it's kind of a neat way to look at your scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and save again. And we're running past the 20 minute mark yet again. <laughs> Should make the marks 25 minutes. That seems to be about where I'm running when I do a segment, but uh, okay. So um, that's pretty much it on texture mapping. In the next section, you know, <clears throat> next section we'll get into, um, I guess we'll render you know what, I'm going to show you real quick. Let's go ahead and go to our camera view. And I'm going to grab the borderline, which is our camera. Just drag it down a little bit. R to rotate it around. R twice. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and render F12. It's going to render the scene. You can see. Johnny's looking looking pretty neat. Starting to look uh, like a nice character. Um, so that's how you render it. One thing we can do to kind of make the skin tone look a little more touchable, a little more realistic, is to give it what's called subsurface scattering. And so let me grab the model again. And what subsurface, subsurface scattering is, is kind of like in your skin, since you have multiple layers of your skin, um, when the light hits it, it reflects off the top layer, but then it also disperses underneath and amongst the other layers of your skin, of your dermis and subderm subdermis and epidermis and all those dermises. Um, so there's a kind of a trick that Blender has and a lot of other 3D software as well. It's called subsurface scattering. So if we turn that on, collapse some of these guys so we can see our example up here. Expand that one. Uh, let's go to preset. We'll say skin one. And it usually takes a little bit. You can see it applies that color on top of the color that's already there and kind of gives it a red tone. I think skin two has a lighter shade. Yeah, that'll work. And if we were render light right now, let me change some of the render settings here. That's really big. Let's make that 1280 by 720, just the default HD settings at 75%. Go ahead and save. And, okay, back to the material settings. Okay, with this, the scale of 0.1, that's usually way too high, and it gives your model a very, very waxy look. So it kind of renders out a pass of the, the model, and then it renders the sub, subdivision surface on top. So, as you can see, like I said, it looks very waxy, uh, very translucent, 
not at all what we're going for. So we'll escape out of there. And let's set the scale to probably a, a tenth of what it is. So let's try 0 0.01. And we'll see what that looks like. And it already looks a little bit better. Probably still a little bit too waxy. Um, and a little too dark, of course. Set the the closer you get to white here, also the less waxy it'll look. So let's put that almost all the way to white. Just a very, very, very subtle pink texture or uh, color. And also, if we set our texture settings right here a little bit, it'll kind of help disperse that amongst the skin tone. So let's see what this. Let's get this down just a little bit more. 0 0.01. So let's do points. 0075. And we'll go ahead and save and render that out. Okay, I think that'll work. We probably need to play with the specular settings a little bit more. Um, and it'll also look better once we get some proper lighting set up, but for the most part, uh, the texture mapping of the base model is pretty well set. Um, I guess in the next section we'll, hmm, I'll just I'll think about it first before I jump in. But we'll either start making some clothes for them, or go ahead and and get get them rigged up. So it's going to be a, it for part ten. Thanks for holding on those last few minutes, um, and I'll see you in part eleven.